Perfect. Okay. So we are just going to start by marching in place. And I'm going to move this angle a little bit. Okay. So we're marching in place. So, you know, usually this style of yoga is done in a hot room. Since we're not in a hot room today, we're going to start just by doing some cardiovascular activity to warm up the body. And again, if any of it doesn't feel right to you, you can modify, you can do something different, you can skip it entirely. Okay, you can stay at this pace, marching in place. You can also pick up the pace and try to tap opposite hand to opposite knee. Keep the chest up, shoulders down. Okay, from here, we're gonna go into jumping jacks. Whee! And if you're joining Zoom a little late, we're just doing some cardio <laughs> before we hop into yoga to warm up the body and get the blood going. From here, we're going to go to the floor and hold a plank. So again, many options for plank. You can spread your fingers wide. You can make fists and be on your fists if you have bad wrists. Um, you are welcome to be on your knees. You can also be on your forearms, whatever works for you. Lift your heels, spread your shoulders wide. Pull your belly in, keep a nice long neck. You can stay here. You can also start to bring right knee to right elbow, left knee to left elbow, right knee to right elbow, left knee to left elbow, and then pick up the pace for mountain climbers. Great way to start your Saturday. <laughs> For five, four, three, two, one, back to plank, hold it, elbows in, shoulders apart. You're going to lift your hips up, down dog. Walk your hands, feet back together. Carefully roll up, knees can bend. And we're going to go back into jumping jacks. <laughs> Slowly reversing out. Okay, we will go back to jogging. Whee! And Let's finish with marching in place. Great, okay. Back to square one. So from here, we'll do the traditional 26 postures and two breathing exercises. Great, okay, change. So my fat always moves around when I do the jumping jacks. Bring your feet together, toes, heels set for pranayama. Deep breathing, good for your lungs, respiratory system. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. All the time, breathe deep against the back of your throat, your nose and your mouth. They're just a passageway. Breathe as much as possible, as long as possible, as slow as possible. Don't forget to have fun. So feet together, interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Rock your weight into your heels. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. You made it to class. Concentrate, meditate, and begin. Inhale, chin down and arms up. Breathe in through your nose. Lift your elbows up, suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head out, exhale through your mouth. AJ, sound head back, arms forward, elbows touch. Good, inhale. Slowly bring your chin down, look straight ahead, chin down. Elbows up, stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up. Keep your eyes open so you don't get dizzy. Look way, way, way back for the wall behind you, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, breathe in through your nose down through your throat to the very bottom of your lungs. Exhale, head up as you exhale. Open your mouth wide, make an HA sound. Completely empty your lungs. Inhale, head down. Every new inhale, you wanna take in more air than the last breath to expand your lung capacity. Exhale, head up. The more you exhale here, the more fresh oxygen you can take in on your next breath, push the air out. 
Inhale, head down. So make this the deepest breath so far. Breathing into the top of the lungs, middle of the lungs, bottom of the lungs, full lungs. Exhale, head up. In our day-to-day -day life, we don't really use our full lung capacity, but the lungs need to be worked out just like any other part of the body. Inhale, head down. So make this the deepest breath so far. Slowly chin down, elbows up, stomach in, full lungs. Exhale, head up. Keep your knuckles touching under your chin like glue. Squeeze palms, wrists, forearms, elbows together. Inhale, head down. I'll do one with you. Elbows up, full lungs. Exhale, head up. Arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Knuckles under the chin like glue. Exhale, head up. Elbows touch. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six. Full lungs. Exhale, head up. Six, five, four, three, two. Elbows touch. One. Inhale, head down. Use the full six seconds to inhale. Slowly chin down. Elbows up when your lungs are full. Exhale, head up. Synchronize your breath with your body movements. If you time it right, elbows touch when your lungs are empty. Inhale, head down. This is the last breath in the first set. Spine a little longer, elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller. Suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, take your time. Eyes open, hips forward, legs locked, stomach in. Keep exhaling, push, squeeze, elbows touch. Change, arms down, you can roll out your shoulders, your head. We do two of almost everything. Second set might be a little bit more familiar. Maybe you can breathe deeper, feet together. Interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Squeeze your thighs, squeeze your butt, grow taller out of the base of your spine, and begin inhale, chin down and arms up, breathing in through the nose, against the back of the throat, create a little bit of a vibration, soaring sensation. Exhale, head up, use your throat muscles. Think of your throat like a valve, constricted, breathe slower. Longer, exhale more, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. So you're not stimulating the vocal cords, it's just a, a gentle rush of air against the back of your throat. Exhale, head up. Let's do jai breathing. So his throat gently constricted, make an HA sound. Arms forward, elbows touch. So inhale, head down. Full lungs. Exhale, head up. Lungs empty. Inhale, head down. One, two, three, four, five. Elbows up. Six. Exhale, head up. Six, five, four, three, two. Lungs empty. One. Inhale, head down. Through yoga, we create a little bit more mind body awareness. Notice where your weight is distributed. Keep the weight in your heels. Exhale, head up. Weight stays in your heels. Squeeze your thighs, squeeze your butt. Hips forward, hips tight. Inhale, head down. So your lower body is a strong foundation. Try not to rock back and forth or side to side. Exhale, head up. Just your head drops back. No backward bending. Keep shoulders over hips, hips over heels, weight in the heels. Inhale, head down. As you inhale, open your rib cage wide. Expand your rib cage so your lungs have room to grow like two big balloons. Exhale, head up. Even as you exhale, suck your stomach in. Bring your belly button to your spine. Elbows touch away from your body. Inhale, head down. Let's do two more breaths in the second set. Look straight ahead. Can you bring your elbows back as well as up? Exhale, head up. Can you grow taller even as you exhale? Chest up, head back. Push the air out, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Last breath in the second set. Deepest breath of your life when your lungs are totally full. Surprise yourself. Take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up, take your time, let everything go through the exhale breath, any worries, any cares, let them go, be here now, elbows touch, change, arms down, can roll out your shoulders, your head, great, we'll continue with half moon with hands to feet pose, Ardha Chandrasana with Padasasana, feet together, inhale your arms over your head, sideways palms together, interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, make an X with your thumbs, Stretch up out of your waist and bend right and left, right and left. Every time you pass through the middle, stretch up a little taller, like you're trying to touch the ceiling. Great. Okay, when you can't stretch anymore, stop in the middle, half moon pose. 
So weight in the heels, hips forward, arms back, squeeze your palms together, suck your stomach in. Inhale, breathing, stretch up, full lungs, try to touch the ceiling, absolutely straight line, slowly bend your body to the right without bending your elbows and knees, continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the left side of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Just remember it's the first posture of the day. There's no rush. Know where you have to be. Nothing you have to prove to yourself or to anybody else. All you have to do is breathe in and out through the nose. Once you can breathe, focus more on form than depth. It's all about alignment. That's how we heal the body. So if the weight is crept into your toes, bring the weight back into your heels. If your butt's sticking out, push your hips a little forward. And if you're leaning forward, collapsing down, upper body back. Keep your arms with your ears, stomach in. Push your left hip forward, get your two hips in line. Now bring your right shoulder forward, chin away from your chest. Open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Come down, push your hips to the left, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, reset, hips forward, head and arms back, stretch up tall, and slowly bend to the left as you push your hips to the right. So just like in pranayama breathing, you want a super strong foundation here. As you keep the weight in your heels, glue ankle bones together, squeeze your thighs, so like contract your quads, squeeze your butt, pull your belly in, and press the hips a little forward. Hip muscles engage, quads engage, butt engage, right? So nice tight lower body, and the same thing with the upper body. Try to keep your arms with your ears. Use your grip strength, squeeze your palms together up to the wrists. No room for light and air between the palms, the biceps, arms, and ears. Always your biceps, your arms touching with your ears. Again, little adjustments. Notice if the weight is creeping into your toes. Bring the weight back into your heels, and make sure you're still breathing in and out through your nose. Push your right hip forward, get your two hips in line. Now bring your left shoulder forward, right shoulder back, so your two shoulders are in line. Chin away from your chest, maybe get a little deeper at the end. Come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up. First back bend, take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, and relax your head all the way back. Look for the floor behind you, and then bring your arms back with your ears, try to touch the wall behind you, full spine backward, bending, full front of the body stretching, keep the weight in your heels. Inhale, breathing, push stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward towards the mirror beyond your flexibility and bring your arms back look back fall back way back go back more back change inhale to come up stretch up exhale bend your knees go down strong stomach suck your stomach in put your hands on the floor and then go for a walk move your hips shake your head this is a u-turn from back bending to forward folding at the beginning of class your spine might not be quite warmed up yet move your hips to get your lower back nice relaxed comfortable easy and flexible Okay, how to stop my hands to feet pose, suck your stomach in. Bend your knees, and at first just try to grab the backs of your calves. Elbows bent back like you're trying to touch your elbows together behind you. If it's easy to grab the backs of your legs, see if you can grab your heels from underneath, stepping on all 10 fingers, little fingers touch. Bend your elbows back, touch stomach to thighs, chest to knees, relax your head, try to touch your face to your shins, Below your knees, no room for light and air between the upper and lower body, but please don't force your body. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, and lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down from the lower spine to the floor, pulling is the object of stretching. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling on the back of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes with a smiling, happy face. It's kind of poetic. Pull on your heels, roll forward, push your big toes down, lift your hips up, stretch your spine. Change, come up, knees can bend. Try to keep a nice flat back, arms with your ears. Nice, arms down, and you stand a little taller. It's kind of the goal, you just stand a little taller. Second set, feet together. Inhale your arms over your head sideways, palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs. Push hips forward, lean the upper body back, stomach in, inhale, stretch up, and slowly drop to the right as you push your hips to the left, coming down in a straight line. Use your right hand to pull your left hand to the top right corner of the room. Push your left heel into the floor, push your right heel into the floor, push your hips further to the left, beyond your flexibility. Mouth closed, eyes open, focus forward. If your eyes are wandering, your mind is wandering, let this be some time just for you. Push your left hip forward so your hips stay in line. Right shoulder forward, right rib cage forward, left shoulder back. Armpit should be opening towards the wall in front of you. So imagine you're leaning against a wall behind you. As you inhale, lengthen your arms. As you exhale, come down, push, push, push. 
change, inhale to come up, reset, hips forward, arms back, inhale, stretch up, and slowly drop to the left as you push your hips to the right a little bit further. I read a fitness quote that kind of bothered me. It was something about like, um, the only person you're competing with is yourself, or the only thing you want to be better than in is uh, better than who you were yesterday. And I agree with that, but I think sometimes in yoga, we think that means we have to go deeper than we did yesterday. And instead, think of better in yourself as um, being more compassionate towards yourself. So some days you can come all the way down and sometimes you can barely bend. And one's not better than the other. As long as you're giving your body what it needs, as long as you're soothing your mind with your breath, you're doing deeper. So only if it feels good, only if it serves your purpose, get a little deeper at the end. Come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up. Second heart opener, take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, relax your head all the way back and then bring your arms back with your ears. It's a little bit hard for me to talk and do at the same time, so I'll talk you through it. If your knees are bending, come up a little bit and lock your legs. Keep the weight in your heels and push stomach, thighs, hips forward towards the mirror as you bring your arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back. Change, inhale to come up, stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees, go down. Arms of your ears, put your hands on the floor, drop your head, and then go for another walk. Move your hips, shake your head. Um, try to keep your heels on the floor. It's the knees and hips moving rather than the feet. Notice second set, what's a little bit more loose, but still a little tight. There's no right or wrong. This is just an opportunity to check in. Second set, hands to feet, close up your stomach in. Bend your knees, grab your heels or the backs of your feet. Bend your elbows back, touch stomach to thighs, chest to knees, drop your head, touch your face to your shins. So eventually the legs will walk, but it doesn't have to be today or tomorrow, especially in a not heated room. I find I need to keep my knees bent for longer and that's not a problem. We are stretching the back. We do not want to strain the hamstrings. So keep your stomach on your thighs with your stomach in, chest on knees, face on the shins, pull on your heels, Roll your weight forward into your toes, push your big toes down, lift your hips up, stretch your spine. Good. Change, come up with a straight spine. Knees can bend, keep your arms with your ears. Very nice, arms down, and you let that one go. Awkward, Ukatasana. Step your right foot to the right, six inches, hip width distance, insides of your feet perfectly parallel, like 11s. Bring your arms up, parallel to the floor, tricep muscles nice and tight, nothing loose or hanging, suck your stomach in, bend your knees and sit down into a chair. Feet flat position, spine straight to begin with, 100% of your body weight in your heels. Sit down, halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in and arch your upper body back, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles, Suck it in, hold it in tight. Bring a little bit more weight back into your heels. Sit down more, lift your chin up, chest up. Lean back, fall back, way back. Try to fall down backwards at the end. Change, inhale to come up, keep your arms there. Push your hips forward, now come up. Maximum on your tiptoes like a ballerina. Stretch the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Bend your knees and sit down. Second part, we're playing around with balance and we're also trying to keep a nice flat back. So tuck your tailbone under a little bit and stretch the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Heels a little higher, <laughs> knees a little higher. Maybe sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change, inhale to come up. Last part, still breathing, heels down. Squeeze your knees, your thighs together. Let your heels come just a little bit off the floor and slowly sit down. Stop whenever you want. There's no obligation to sit all the way down. Eventually sliding your back down an imaginary wet marble wall. Stop when you're a half inch off your heels. Squeeze your knees together and forward. Thighs parallel to the floor. Arms parallel to the thighs. Spine perfectly straight from the side. Should look like you're holding a box. Change. Slowly push the floor away from you. Nice, heels down, right foot back, arms down, take a breath. And second set, right foot steps to the right, hip width distance, six inches. I'll show you second set from the side. Bring your arms up, parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight, suck your stomach in, three, two, one, bend your knees, sit down into a chair, feet flat, spine straight, all of the weight in your heels. Suck your stomach in, arch your upper body back. Roll your shoulders back and down. Bring a little bit more weight back, so shift your Knees back, shins back, hips back. Suck your stomach in and lean back. Chin up, chest up, change. Inhale to come up. Keep your arms there. Push your hips forward. Now come up on your toes. So engage your lower abdominal wall. 
pull up on your pelvic floor, stretch up, now bend your knees, sit down. So you're just pulling everything up as you sit down, spine straight. Heels a little higher, knees a little higher. Sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change, inhale to come up. Last part, heels down. Squeeze your knees, your thighs together. Let your heels come just a little bit off the floor. And slowly sit down. Nice flat back, belly in. Remember, stop whenever you want. Or when you're half inch off your heels, so come up a little bit. Squeeze your knees together and forward more. Pull your belly in, shoulders down, chest up. Change, slowly come up. Nice, heels down, right foot back, arms down. Eagle pose, Garasana. Notably, I'm not um, mirroring you, but you've already figured out by now. So when I say right side, it might look like left side. That's okay. Look at your arms. Identify which arm is right, which arm is left. Don't mix them up. Eagle Garasana. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, right arm under left arm. Right under left, you have a couple options. You can grab your shoulders. You can interlock fingers or you can have hands in prayer. Make sure thumbs towards your nose, fingers away from your nose. Pull elbows down. Bend your knees, sit down, just like the last posture. Try to get your hips into a chair. Stay down there and bring your right leg up and over your left leg, cross twist. Eventually hook your right foot behind your left calf muscle so all five toes are visible. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left, twist leg ropes. Try to straighten your wrists. Pull your elbows down. One day fingers go below your nose. Suck your stomach in, arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, left arm under the right arm, left under the right, palms together, thumbs towards your nose, pinkies away from your nose. Remember you can grab shoulders or interlock fingers. Pull elbows down, bend your knees, sit down first, lean back, try to keep your hips low and just bring your left leg up and over your right leg. At first, your foot's kind of hanging out, no problem. As you're ready, point your toes towards your calf, and eventually, without forcing the body, one day you'll wrap your left foot behind your right calf muscle. It doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. As a reminder, we're not symmetrical. This side might feel pretty similar to the other side. It might feel wildly different. You might know why, you might not. That's part of the mystery, right? We're just checking in. Slowly bring knees to the left, upper body to the right, Keep the weight in your heel. Sit down more, suck your stomach in, arch your upper body back. Good, change. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head, second set. Exhale, right arm under left arm. Think right bicep under left tricep. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, lean back, and bring your right leg over your left leg. Think hamstring over quadricep. Cross twist, breathe slowly, in and out to your nose. If your foot is wrapping, try to eliminate the gap between your ankle and calf muscles. So rather than flexing your foot, point it down towards the floor. Notice if your hands are way to the side of your face, draw your hands back to the center line of your body and pull your elbows down. Weight in your heel, hips down and back. Arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head. Last one, finish strong. Exhale, left arm under your right arm, use momentum. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, lean back, and bring your left leg up and over your right leg, cross twist, breathe slowly. So we're starting to transition into the balance part of class. And when we balance on one leg, sometimes we forget to breathe because we're just like so focused. So check in, seal your lips, relax your jaw, let your breath be your guide. If you can breathe, sit a little bit lower, suck your stomach in, Arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, arms down, party time. Grab a sip of water if you want. Cheers, friends. Party time, love you all. <laughs> so glad everybody's here. Okay. And let's see here. So for the next three postures, we're gonna keep balancing on one leg. Um, if you fall out, just hop back in. So you always end on one leg. You don't have to like hop all the way into the posture, just finish on one leg. Okay. Standing head to knee. Dandayamana, Janu Shavasana. Shift your weight to your left leg. Evenly distribute your body weight on your left foot. So throughout the posture, notice if all the weight is in your heel and your toe keeps coming off the floor, you wanna evenly distribute your body weight on all four corners of your standing foot. Lift your right leg up, 
flex your right toes back to your face, suck your stomach in. As you're ready, round forward and pick up your right foot. Nice tight grip, don't lose the grip. This is the setup of the posture. You can stay here the whole time, and if you fall out, hop back in. If you've been coming for a while, and you know your left leg is locked, no bend, no wobble, inhale breathing slowly, gently lift your right leg up. Stretch it forward until your right leg is exactly parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower, standing leg locked. Take a deep breath, kick your heel forward, flex your toes back, you're chaining your Achilles to stretch. If the left leg is bending, posture hasn't started. If both legs lock from the side legs make an L like Linda, then bend elbows down. Touch your elbows to your calf muscles. One day elbows go below the calf muscles. Lock your leg, lock your leg, lock your leg. Change. Slowly reverse out. Shift your weight to your right leg. Evenly distribute your body weight on your right foot. Big toe points forward. Contract your inner thigh as well as your outer thigh. Squeeze your butt cheek. Lift your left leg up. Flex your toes back to your face. Suck your stomach in from start to finish, abdominal wall engaged. As you're ready, slowly round forward, don't force. Eventually, you'll pick up your foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, even your thumbs under the foot. So the grip is more like you're gonna help a friend over a fence and less like you're gonna eat a sandwich. Thumbs under the foot. If your big toe's coming off the floor, you're leaning back too much. Shift more weight forward. Suck your stomach in, and when you're ready, lift your left leg up. So it's a little bit tricky. When our back is tight, We'll like sink our butt back, but instead you want to push your hips forward so the big toe stays on the floor. Evenly distribute your body weight on all four corners of your right foot. Contract your inner thigh as well as your outer thigh. If both legs lock, you should feel tremendous stretching feeling on the backs of both legs. Then bend elbows in and down. Touch your elbows to your calf muscles. Keep bending the elbows down. One day elbows go below the calf muscles. Everybody, heel forward, toes back, stomach in. Good, change. Slowly reverse out. You can put your hands on your back and do a little back bend whew, or a knee bend. So for sure this posture gets my heart rate up. I hope it does for you too. Second set, shift your weight to your left leg, contract your quadricep muscles, squeeze your butt cheeks, suck your stomach in, lift your right leg up, flex your right toes back, and as you're ready, round down, pick up your right foot. So it's a rounded spine posture, it's a compression posture. Compress your abdominal wall, Round your spine. When you're ready, lift your right leg up. Don't forget to have fun. Kick your heel forward, flex your toes back. If both legs lock, bend elbows down. If elbows go below your calf muscles, and you can balance comfortably. Slowly tuck your chin to your chest, and put your forehead on your knee. And when you're ready, Slowly reverse out. <laughs> Good. Last one. Shift your weight to your right leg. Squeeze your right thigh. Suck your stomach in. Don't forget to breathe. We'll lift your left leg up. Round down. Pick up your left foot. All ten fingers interlock. So breathe through your nose. Pull your belly in. Concentrate. Meditate. Away we go. Lift your left leg up. Just be curious. See what happens. Kick your heel forward. Breathe through your nose. If both legs lock, bend elbows down. If elbows go below calf muscles, slowly tuck your chin to your chest and maybe put your forehead on your knee. When you're ready, change, slowly reverse out. Nice, go team. So that was a forward curl. Next you do a back bend, standing bow pulling pose. Feet together, bring your right hand up. Bring it out to the right, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your right ankle at the ankle bone. Left arm up, arm with your ear, knees together to start. Lift your chin, lift your chest, take a breath, stretch up. And when you're ready, slowly charge your body forward as you kick your right leg back and up. So we're right here in the middle of the balancing postures, and this is the cardiovascular part of class. So heart rate might increase, that's okay. Just make sure you're breathing in and out through your nose. If you're in DC, this is also the time of year where like your room, maybe your space starts to feel like a hot room. Um, if you just keep your AC off like I'm doing, you might be sweating a little bit more than last month. That's great too. Slide your left shoulder forward. Kick your right leg back and up. Breathe through your nose. Slowly come down, bring the body down and the leg up. See the foot come over the top of your head from the side, two heels in line. Kick back and up, two shoulders in line. 
body down more, whoop, leg up more, charge your body forward, try to touch the wall in front of you, kick, 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 good, change, slowly kick yourself out, feet together, arms down, so the harder you kick, you can balance forever, if you start to wobble, just freeze where you are and kick really hard, bring your left hand up, bring it out to the left, reach back, without turning or twisting your wrist, pick up the inside of your left ankle, half the ankle bone, try to bring knees together, right arm up, Arm with your ear, lift your chin, lift your chest. It's a back bend, so stretch up and now charge your body forward. Simultaneously kick your left leg back and up. So it's a back bend. Try to push your chest and throat forward. Arm forward, chin away from your chest. Let your stomach relax though. So from the side, deep back bend. All five fingers together, thumb with your index finger, Palm of your right hand faces the floor. Get your right arm exactly parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower, standing leg locked. As you're ready, come down to parallel, so belly button facing the floor, but chin still away from the chest. Slide your right shoulder forward, kick harder. Body down more, leg up more, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, slowly kick yourself out. Feet together, arms down. Take a slow inhale to your nose, and a slow exhale to your nose. Second set. Bring your right hand up a little bit shorter. Bring the hand out to the right. Reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your right ankle. Cut the ankle bone. Knees together. Left arm up. Arm with your ear. Give yourself high five for doing yoga this morning. Lift your chin. Lift your chest. Stretch up and slowly kick. Stretch and breathe. There's a squirrel putting on a show outside of my window right now. So it's a little bit distracting. I used to think like, Oh, Connecticut Avenue where we practice yoga is distracting. If only I wasn't there, I would never get distracted. But I found no matter where I am, I get distracted. So that's part of why we practice yoga. We're just practicing breathing in the present moment. Bring the body down more, leg up more, slide the left shoulder forward, charge your body forward, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, slowly kick yourself out. Feet together, arms down. Last one, you can do it back bend. Bring your left hand up. Bring it out to the left, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your left ankle, knees together. Right arm up, arm with your ear, chin away from your chest. Lift your chest, shoulder blade up, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, and breathe. Kicking and stretching equal, simultaneous, 50-50. The harder you kick, you can balance forever. If you keep falling out, hop back in, kick even harder. Push your left foot into your left hand and push your right fingertips forward. Body down more, leg up more, slide the right shoulder forward, kick and stretch, kick and stretch, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly, kick yourself out. Feet together, arms down, wonderful. Come to the back of your mat and tell Tula Dundasana balancing stick. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head sideways, palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, bring your head and arms back. Step your right foot forward, lock both legs, point your left toes, and slowly tilt like a seesaw. Arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor. So from the side, body makes a T like Tom, not a broken umbrella. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change, left foot down, right foot back, arms back, lean back. Step your left foot forward, lock both legs, point your right toes, and slowly tilt. Charge your body forward, try to touch the wall in front of you, Shoulder blades, scapula coming out of the body. Squeeze your palms together, suck your stomach in, stretch. Good, change, right foot down, left foot back, arms down, take a breath. Right away, second set, feet together, inhale your arms over your head, sideways palms together, interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, head and arms back, nice flat back. Step your right foot forward, keep your arms with your ears, Point your left toes and tilt. So actively push your fingertips away from your head. If your elbows are bending, come up a little bit. Touch your arms to your ears. Drop your left hip down. Square off your hip. Stretch. Nice. Change. Left foot down. Right foot back. Everybody looks so good. Lean back. Chest up. Step your left foot forward. Lock both legs. Point your right toes. Tilt. Push your hands away from your body. Push your big toe away from your body like a human tug of war. Stretch. 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 Good, change, right foot down, left foot back, arms down. Enough of that, come to the top of your mat and tell, 
you can face me, or if you have your mat set up the long way, you can face the long way on your mat. Standing separate leg stretching, Dande Mana, Vikaptapada Paschimottanasana. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, big step, arms down parallel to the floor. Turn your toes in so your feet are pigeon toed. If you have active sciatica, point your toes forward. Lock your legs, lift your chest, and swan dive forward. Lean forward. Eventually, grab your heels from behind, roll forward, and touch your forehead to the floor. If you can't grab your heels yet, try to grab the outsides of your feet or start with your hands in front of you. But wherever your hands are, roll forward. Push your big toes down. You want your hips directly over your ankles. Contract your quadricep muscles so the hamstrings can release. And if you do have a grip on your feet, start to pull. Pulling is the object of stretching. So first the leg stretching, then the hip stretching, lower spine stretching, pulse spine, whole body stretching, three 60 degree angle stretching, coccyx to toes, coccyx to forehead, touch your forehead to the floor in between your feet. Good, change slowly, come up, push the hips forward, nice. Step your right foot back, arms over your head, arms down. I'll show you second set from the side. The idea is you hinge at your hips, so your legs and your spine stay straight the whole time. Second set, stretching. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, big step, arms down parallel to the floor, toes in, heels out, lock your legs, lift your chest, and swan dive forward, go down, weight in your toes, back flat. If you can grab your heels, bend your elbows back rather than out, bend elbows to calves, shoulders to ceiling, belly button to spine. Everybody roll forward. If your forehead's not yet touching the floor, maybe take a bigger step, pull, stretch. Everybody, shoulders up, elbows back, stomach in, Pull, stretch, take a bigger step if you need to, touch your forehead to the floor, in between your feet. Nice, change, slowly come up, push the hips forward, good. Step your right foot back, arms over your head, arms down, nice. Triangle Trikonasana, this is the biggest step we take in class, it's a great hip opener, spine twist, chest opener, triangle. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, big step, arms down parallel to the floor, push your hips forward, lean your upper body back, and turn your right foot out, maybe left toes in a little bit. Bend your right leg, lunge, try to sit down. You can take a bigger step or rotate your left hip forward if it helps you sit down more. Lean back and move your arms at the same time. Right elbow in front of the knee, stretch down, aim your fingers to your big and second toe. Now look up and stretch up, touch your shoulder and chin together, push your left hip forward and down, Push your right knee back with the help of your elbow. Reach your left arm up, stretch your right arm down, turn, twist upper body back, stomach in, lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in, left toes out, make sure your two heels are in line. Then you can turn the right toes in a little bit and even rotate your right hip forward. Inhale, bend your left leg, lunge. If your step is too short, you can't sit down very low and your knee will go beyond your ankle. That can hurt. Simply taking a bigger step or pushing the right hip forward might help you sit down more. And then move your arms, elbow in front of the knee, right arm up to the ceiling. So in some styles of triangle, the hips lift up and the chest comes down. In this style of triangle, it's a deep lunge. So the hips sit down and the chest lifts up. You want one long diagonal line from your ankle all the way to the crown of your head. Look up towards the ceiling and reach your right arm up, drop your right thigh down, turn, twist upper body back, lock your right leg, right foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your left leg, reversing out, left toes in, right foot back, arms over your head, arms down. Nice, take a slow inhale to your nose and a slow exhale to your nose. Second set, inhale your arms over your head sideways. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, big step, arms down parallel to the floor, push your hips forward, lean back, turn your right foot out, maybe left toes in, bend your right leg, lunge, lean back, and move your arms, elbow in front of the knee, graze your fingers towards your big and second toe, but don't touch the floor, don't push any weight on the floor, look up towards the ceiling, try to bring your right ear closer to the wall in front of you, all five fingers together, thumb with your index fingers, triceps working hard, reach your left arm up, stretch your right arm down, turn, twist up your body back, lock your left leg, left foot flat on the floor, change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in, left toes out, still breathing, Inhale, bend your left leg, lunge. 
Sit down, left leg should make an upside down L like Linda. Sit down more, stay down there, then just move your arms. Left elbow in front of the knee, right arm up to the ceiling, six and 12 on the clock. Try to bring left shoulder forward, right shoulder back so the chest is nice and open. So push the hips forward, lean the upper body back, drop your right thigh down, push your left knee back and stretch up through the crown of your head. Turn, twist upper body back, lock your right leg, right foot flat on the floor, change. Rotate your arms, straighten your left leg, left toes in, right foot back, arms over your head, arms down. Wonderful. Next is standing, separate leg head to knee. Dande Amana Vikata Pada Janu Shirasana. Smother pressure over you, round the spine, and squeeze into the abdominal wall. Inhale your arms over your head, palms together, just your thumbs crossed. Step your right foot to the right, three feet, 36 inches, maybe a little bit wider step. Pivot on your heels, face one side of the room. Turn your back toes in. So for me, I'm turning my back left toes in. Push your hips forward one, two, three, four, five times. Two hips in line, two heels in line. Backside foot makes a 45 degree angle. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down. Chin tuck to chest, round your spine, compress your abdominal wall, try to touch your forehead to your knee. If you're looking at your front right knee right now and going, no way can I touch my forehead to my knee. Take a little bit of a wider step. Bend your front legs, tuck your chin to your chest, and now try to touch your knee and head together. Stretch all 10 fingers just beyond your big and second toe. Right hip up, left hip forward so your hips stay in line. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change. Slowly uncurl, vertebra by vertebra, disc by disc, head up last. Good, pivot on your heels, pivot on your heels, Uncross your heels, and maybe take a little bit of a bigger step. Push your hips forward one, two, three, four, five times. Peel your left rib cage back. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest. Go down, round your spine. Round, scoop, curl, tuck, concave. All 10 fingers beyond your big and second toe. You can turn your right toes in more. You can take a bigger step. You can bend your front leg. Stomach in, try to touch your knee and head together. It's a great stretch through the neck and compression to the throat, thyroid, parathyroid gland. It's a great way to create space between your vertebrae and squeeze into your abdominal wall. Left hip up, right hip down. Try to keep your hips in line. Walk your hands back together if they've separated. Push your forehead into your knee. Lock both legs, stomach in, hands together. Change, hands together all the way up. Right hip forward, full stop at the top. Nice, pivot on your heels. Right foot back, arms down. Lovely, ooh, I have something in my eye. Okay, second set, head to knee right away. Inhale your arms over your head, palms together, only cross your thumbs. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, three to four feet. Pivot on your heels, face the right side of the room. Push your hips forward, one, two, three, four, five times. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Arms with your ears, one day arms behind your ears. Arms is an extension of your spine. Balance challenge, try to keep your hands together. Touch your knee and head together. Front side compression. Notice if one hip is way higher than the other. Left hip forward, right hip back. Pull your belly in. Touch head and knee together. Push forehead into knee, lock both legs, hands together. Change, slowly uncurl. Facing the right side of the room so your spine doesn't twist and transition. Head up last. Nice. Pivot on your heels. Pivot on your heels. Uncross your heels. Turn your back foot in. Push your hips forward. Stretch up first. Tuck your chin to your chest. Go down. Can you look at your belly button all the way down? You cannot see your left foot all the way down. Right hip forward, forward, forward. Left hip back. Touch your knee and head together. Pull your belly in. Squeeze into the abdominal wall. So every time you exhale, pull the belly in even more. Round your spine, bring your belly button closer to the ceiling. Left hip up, right hip down, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. Push forehead into knee, lock both legs, hands together first. Change slowly and curl as if you're dragging your forehead up your thigh, your chest, head up very fast. Nice. Pivot on your heels, right foot back arms down. Come to the middle of your mat and towel for the hip opening series, tree and toe. Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg and lift your right leg up. You can have your foot on your shin, your knee, your thigh, 
Eventually hold on to your foot from underneath your foot, touch your heel to your costume, and when you're ready, let your right knee drop down and back into a half lotus shape, but please never force your knees. Bring your right hand up to the center of your chest, and if you can balance left hand up, palms together, namaskar. Press your hips forward and lift your chest up. Think about temporarily eliminating any curvature in your spine. Good, change, slowly lower your right leg down. Shift your weight to your right leg, contract your right thigh muscles and lift your left leg up. Hold space that we're not symmetrical, this side might feel different. Touch your heel to your costume and slowly gently let your left knee drop down and back. Never force your knees. You want to feel this in your hips, not your knee. Left hand up to the center of your chest. And if you can balance without your foot sliding, right hand up. So on the other side, my foot stays, but on this side, it kind of slips, right? So I heard it slips a lot. So I'm going to continue to hold on to my foot with my hand. Push your hips forward, lift your chest up, relax your shoulders down, lock your standing leg. Good, change, slowly lower your left leg down. You're welcome to do a second set of tree. You can also try toe stand. Pick a spot on the floor, four feet in front of you. Don't move your eyes, it helps with balance. Lock your left leg and lift your right leg up anywhere above the thigh, anywhere above the knee's great. Um, if your foot is prone to slipping, you can hold on to your foot, otherwise hands together. Suck your stomach in, concentrate, meditate, hold forward. Touch your hands to the floor. Lock your hands forward, lean forward. Lift your heel. Bend your knees, sit down. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips. Make sure you're having fun. Left hand up to the center of your chest. Right hand up, palms together, elbows down, spine straight, point your right toes, come a half inch off your heel. Nice, when you're ready, put your hands on the floor. Lift your hips up, you're welcome to come up on two feet or push your hips forward to reverse out. Go team, good stuff. Change, right leg down. Shift your weight to your right leg, lock your right leg, and lift your left leg up. And you can hold on to your foot on the way down or bring hands together. Pick a spot on the floor, concentrate, meditate, stomach in. Here we go, hold forward. Touch your hands to the floor, walk your hands forward, lean forward, lift your heel, keep leaning forward as you sit down. All the weight should be in your arms. Walk your hands back to either sides. Notice if your knee is like way wider, way higher, try to get your two knees in line. Point your left toes. Left hand up, right hand up, elbows down, spine straight, come a half inch off your heel. And when you're ready, put your hands on the floor, lift your hips up. I love falling out of that posture. You can come up on two feet or push your hips forward to reverse out. <laughs> Change, left leg down, honor yourself, give yourself high five, fist bump, turn around, Savasana. We are on the floor for the rest of class. What a delight to be here with all of you today. Okay. Great, okay, so head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Bring your heels together, let your toes fall open. Arms down, palms face the ceiling, eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. Okay. I will read you a poem today. So we're doing well on time. So you may have heard this poem before. It's called The Invitation. It's by Oriah Mountain Dreamer. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for and if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. It doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon. I want to know if you have touched the center of your own sorrow, if you have been opened by life's betrayals or have become shriveled and closed from fear of further pain. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it or fade it or fix it. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own, 
If you can dance with wildness and let the ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes without cautioning us to be careful, be realistic, remember the limitations of being human. It doesn't interest me if the story you are telling me is true. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself. If you can bear the accusation of betrayal and not betray your own soul. If you can be faithless and therefore trustworthy. I want to know if you can see beauty even when it is not pretty every day. And if you can source your own life from its presence. I want to know if you can live with failure, yours and mine, and still stand at the edge of the lake and shout to the silver of the full moon, yes. It doesn't interest me to know where you live or how much money you have. I want to know if you can get up after the night of grief and despair, weary and bruised to the bone, and do what needs to be done to feed the children. It doesn't interest me who you know or how you came to be here. I want to know if you will stand in the center of the fire with me and not shrink back. It doesn't interest me where or what or with whom you have studied. I want to know what sustains you from the inside when all else fails away, falls away. I want to know if you can be alone with yourself and if you truly like the company you keep in the empty moments. That's the invitation by Orion Mountain Dreamer. I think yoga helps us enter into a space where we feel invited to be with ourselves and the pain and the joy and our own truth. So thank you guys. Sometimes I say yoga is a wonderful opportunity to be alone together. That's especially true during COVID. We are physically separate, but still, you know, connected through this community. So thank you for being part of this community. Take a slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. Pavana Muttasana when removing pose. Right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin, nice tight white knuckle grip. Pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, completely avoid your rib cage. Keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body, pull down extra hard, maximum pressure in your lower right abdomen, massaging your ascending colon. Change, right leg down. Left leg up, grab your left shin, just below the uh, knee, nice tight white knuckle grip. Pull your knee out to the left, down towards your shoulder, massaging your descending colon. Keep your right leg on the floor. If your right calf muscle doesn't naturally touch the floor, flex your right toes back to your face to anchor your hips and shoulders down. Change, left leg down, both legs up, grab your elbows, each other, give yourself a really big hug for coming to class, good for you. Squeeze your knees together and down. Keep your head on the floor. Two heels in line side by side. When you line up your feet, you line up your hips. So without lifting your head, tuck your chin in a little bit and look down the center line of your body. Eventually or in the future when the bone joint skeletal system has improved, the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. Good. change. Arms down and eyes open. It's worth noting that these postures are part of the hip opening series, just like tree and toe. So the postures we did before Savasana, tree pose and toe stand, those are part of the hip opening series and so is this one. So from a bird's eye view, you want to keep your hips and shoulders parallel. Second set, right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, pull your knee out and down. So picture what you look like right now from a bird's eye view. And maybe you can see how it's part of the hip opening series, right? Like if you brought your foot to your costume and let your right knee drop down, all of a sudden you would be in tree pose, right? So it's a little bit of a different rotation to the hips. Do try to keep hips in line, chest open, change. Right leg down, left leg up, pull your knee out and down. So these postures on our back help us to align the spine. It's great for digestion. And as you push the pads of your fingers into the backs of your hands, you work on grip strength as well, right? Nice, tight, anti-arthritic grip. Change, left leg down, fingers flush out, and then both legs up, grab your elbows, each other, give yourself another big hug. So it massages the transverse colon in the midtown train. So it's called wind removing pose for a reason. You're putting pressure on your lower abdomen to push out gas bubbles from the stomach, because after this, we lie on our stomach, right? So. Um, and you need to let go, go for it. Uh, keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body. So even your eyeballs get a little bit of a stretch. 
Slowly over time, the neck, the shoulders, the hips, everything softens to the floor. Good, change, arms down and eyes open. Next, we do a straight leg sit up. Um, if you have any concerns about your back, and especially lower back pain, a history of slip discs, please skip the sit up, at least the first sit up, right? You'll just roll off to the side and meet us on your stomach. Otherwise, we'll do a sit up. I will show you the first one from the side. So bring your legs together, arms over your head, only cross your thumbs. Flex your toes back to your face. Keep your heels on the floor. Squeeze your back, so a strong lower body. Suck your stomach in, take a breath, hold your breath, tuck your chin to your chest, and sit up. Round your spine, exhale, elbows to floor, forehead to knees. So every sit up, you wanna to try to touch forehead to knees and elbows to floor, rounding your spine. Good, turn, lie on your stomach for the spine strengthening series, starting with Cobra Bhujangasana, good for your lower lumbar spine. For this version of Cobra, have your fan, hands flat on the floor, just below your shoulders so your elbows point up. Bring your feet together like a cobra's tail. Lock your legs, look up, and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. Looks good, come up halfway only. Use 100% back strength. Elbows stay bent, they make an L, a 90 degree angle. Hug your arms into your sides and roll your shoulders back and down. Try to touch your elbows to your hips. Don't forget about your cobra's tail. Keep your feet together, toes, heels touch. Lock your legs and squeeze your butt. Push your feet down. Hips down, hands down, look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change, slowly lower down. Look to your right, left ear on the towel, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. Send deep belly breaths in and out through your nose to massage the front of your body. Breathe deep into any point of tension. The belly savasanas and the back savasanas are their own postures, equally as important as the others. Second set, shin forward, place your hands flat on the floor. It's a bad yogi habit to like have the fingers apart or the hands cupping. Really activate your hands here, root down through your hands, feet together, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, look up and lift, stretch your upper body off the floor. So contract your thigh muscles. For a lot of us, when we lock the legs or squeeze the quads, the knees start to lift off the floor, but the feet and the hips stay grounded. This is a really effective way to isolate the um, lower back muscles. And by pushing your hands into the floor, you start to activate all the back muscles. So it's a great stretch through the chest, stretching the fascia on the chest, opening through the throat, opening the shoulders, but it's also really good for back strength. Feet together, squeeze your butt, push your feet down, hips down, hands down, look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change, slowly lower down. Look to your left, right ear on the towel, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. This is an inverse opening to the hips and the shoulders. So when we lie on our back in Savasana, you know we have the heels together and the toes fall open, but when we lie on our stomach, we have toes together and heels fall open. So it's a different rotation to the pelvis. Great. Okay, next we do everybody's favorite locust, Shalabhasana. Bring your chin forward, chin on your mat. Flip your palms down to face the floor. So thumbs outside, pinkies towards each other. As you're ready, wiggle your arms underneath you, right, left, right, left. Eventually, pinky fingers touch. It's okay to be uncomfortable, but never force your body. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up to a 45 degree angle. That's half of 90. See your foot come over the top of your head. So lengthen to lift, stretch your big toe to the wall behind you, and then lift your heel up to the ceiling. Shoulders down, eyes open, breathe in and out through your nose. Good, change slowly with control, lower your right leg down. Try to Exit slowly. Relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes and lift your left leg up. So sometimes we go into posture super carefully and then like we, you know, gas out at the end and we like flop out. Make sure you can still gracefully go out of postures the same way that you go into them. Press your shoulders down, grab the floor with your fingertips, lift your heel up, lock your left leg. Change slowly with control, lower your left leg down. Tuck your chin and mouth down. So mouth on the towel, nice long neutral neck. Bring your arms a little closer underneath you. Grab the floor. Micro bend in the elbows here. You want to push the shoulders down rather than your chest. Squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, and lift both legs up. Come up, everybody come up. You can do it. Struggle a little harder. Don't give up. Feet together. Toes, heels touch. Squeeze your butt more than you thought you could. Lock your legs. Lift your thighs up. Good. Change slowly with control. Lower down. 
bring your arms out. Look to the right, left ear on the towel. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. Slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. Second set. Chin forward, bring your arms underneath you. So flip your palms down, bring your arms underneath you. Grab the floor with your fingertips. Knuckles touch your thighs. Palms touch the floor. Chin forward, eyes open. Lock your right leg. Point your right toes. Lift your right leg up. Here we go. Lift it all the way up. We're going to hold here for 20 seconds. Breathing slow in and out through your nose. What else are you doing? Push your shoulders down. Grab the floor with your fingertips. Lock your right leg. Hold here for 10, 9, 8, 7. Heel up. 6. Breathe. 5. You can do it. 4. Three, point your toe, two, one. Slowly with control, right leg down. Relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes and lift your left leg up. This posture is great for strengthening the body and it's also creating a tourniquet effect on your arms here. So in the posture, you are increasing your heart rate, you're stretching out the ligaments in your arms, your hands, great for upper body flexibility. Change slowly, left leg down. Grand finale, tuck your chin and mouth down. Bring your arms closer, grab the floor, deepen the tourniquet effect. Squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, and lift both legs up. Come up, everybody come up, roll forward. Tricep muscles tight, feet together, squeeze your butt, and point your toes to the wall behind you. Strong lower body, even stronger mind. Mouth down, mind over the matter posture. Lock your legs, lift your heels up. Change slowly with control, lower down. Bring your arms out, releasing the tourniquet effect, and then look to the left right here on the towel. So as you release the tourniquet effect, heart rate is elevated. Lots of fresh blood rushing through the shoulders, elbows, wrists, and fingers. The posture itself is great for stretching out the arms, but the release is really good for circulation, um, working through any scar tissue, or if you have arthritis, uric acid buildup in your joints, right? So, Sometimes the release from the posture is just as therapeutic as the posture itself. Okay, full locus, Pranishal Avasana. Let's keep going. Chin forward, bring your arms out to the side like airplane wings, feet together, toes and heels touch. Squeeze your butt, lock your legs, feet together, please. Point your toes, look up and fly. Arms, body, head, legs, everything lifts off the floor, 747 taking off just your hip bones on the floor, the rest of your body's in the air. Look up to the ceiling where your eyes go, body nose to follow. Notice if your feet are separating, keep your feet together. Notice if your hands are, or your fingers are separating, all five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers, lift your thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change, slowly lower down, tuck in your wings, look to the right, left ear on the towel, toes together, heels fall open. Back and set, arms out to the side, feet together, toes, heels, touch. Here we go. Squeeze your butt. I'm so glad we're all here together. Point your toes, look up, and fly. So, in this posture, you're strengthening all the muscles that surround your back. It's a great shoulder and chest opener for sure, but it's so good for strengthening your back muscles. You can even like take a second and place your hands on your back and feel how strong those muscles are getting. It's pretty cool. Feet together, toes, heels, touch, lift your thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change, slowly lower down, tuck in your wings, look to the left, right ear on the towel. You've maybe heard a joke in the fitness community before about like, don't forget leg day, right? Like sometimes you'll see guys who go to the gym and work out their upper body, but then their legs are teeny tiny. The style of yoga works all the different parts of the body, but I like to say in Bikram yoga, every day is fine day. Every day we work on the muscles that surround the back, healthy spine, healthy life, right? That's kind of the idea here. So last one on the stomach, full spine back bend, Dhanurasana floor bow, chin on the floor, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, two inches below the toes. Um, if you can't grab both feet, grab one foot, opposite arm out in front, second set, you will switch it out. You can always use a strap as well. Squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up to the ceiling, 
and start to kick. Continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission. Looks so good. It's the kick that drives the posture. If you need to, roll forward once. Freeze between your ribs and your hips. Hold still. Do little sips of air in and out through your nose. So it's a full spine back bend. And as you lie on your stomach like this, um, it's also good for digestion. Notice if your knees are way wider than your hips. Try to bring your knees in. Feet out. Wrist straight. Look up. Kick, kick, kick. Good. Change slowly with control. Lower down. Look to your right, left ear on the towel. Maybe bringing your chin closer to your shoulder. Maybe whole left ear flat on the floor. Maybe not. Gentle twist and stretch through the neck and shoulder just by looking right and left. Last one on the stomach, second set floor bow. Here we go, you can do it. Chin on the floor, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside or opposite foot. Um, if your wrists are bending, second set, challenge yourself to keep your wrists straight. Squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up, and kick hard into your hands. So try to touch your big toes to the ceiling. Notice if one foot is higher than the other, kick harder into the lower foot, even out the feet. Again, notice if your wrists are super bent, try to straighten the wrists a little bit more. Upper fingertip strength there. Bring your knees in, feet out, wrist straight, look up to the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly with control, lower down. Very nice. Look to the left, right ear on the towel, take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. Wonderful. Tuck your toes under, put your hands on the floor, push up, and we'll hold a plank here for just a little while. Elbows in, shoulders apart, neck long. Heels up, root down through all 28 knuckles. Did you know you have 28 knuckles? How cool is that? Heels up, belly in. Okay, good. Come to the top of your mat and towel, fixed firm, soup to Vajrasana. I'll show you the first set from the side. Open your feet, open your knees. You can stay here in tabletop. As you're ready, start to walk your hands back and sink your butt down to the floor in between your heels. Um, if your butt's not yet touching the floor, that's really normal. You can keep your hands in front of you, beside you, or behind you. Please never force your body. If you can sit down between your heels comfortably, put your hands on your feet. Bend your right elbow down, stopping anywhere you feel a point of pain. Left elbow down, knees never come off the floor. If both elbows touch the floor, drop your head back. If you can touch your head to the floor, then tuck your chin in, neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows each other, look down the center line of your body and breathe. Wherever you are is perfect. You want a gentle stretch through your toes, ankles, knees, and hips, never a point of pain. Change. Put your hands on your feet. Come up carefully. Head up last. Turn around. Savasana. Head to the front of your mat. Feet to the back of your mat. Heels together. Toes fall open. You might have heard at some point in your life the serenity prayer, which is something along the lines of like, God, grant me, you know, the like, you know, the ability to change what needs to be changed and the wisdom to be okay with the things that cannot be changed. And I think yoga is like, all like a constant serenity prayer. Like, you know, we're um, practicing with ourselves, like changing the things that can be changed, but it also is a practice of like being okay with the fact that sometimes progress is slow and maybe you've been practicing this for like 10 years and your butt's not on the floor yet. And like, that's okay, right? We're just practicing being okay with whatever it is. As long as you're getting a stretch, as long as you can like walk freely when you leave the room, like that's the real goal, right? It doesn't really matter how deep you go into the posture. As long as you feel good when you leave. All of the postures are tools. They are a means towards yourself, towards a better you. They're not um, like in and of themselves a thing, right? All the postures are simply tools to better yourself, physically, mentally, all that stuff. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, elbows to floor, forehead to knee. And if this is up, start to bother your back. Remember, you can skip them. Second set, um, fixed firm. So start with your hands on the floor, open your feet. You can try opening your knees a little bit wider too. Remember, you can stay here. As you're ready, walk your hands back, maybe sinking your butt down. Um, a pro tip, flip out your calves if you have like thick calf muscles like I do. Flipping out the calves can help you sit down more. Put your palms on your soles. Right elbow down, take your time. Left elbow down, drop your head back. Head on the floor, tuck your chin in, neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows each other, maybe walk your knees back together, the knees never come off the floor. Look down the center line of your body, get a nice back bend. 
Take a slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. Wherever you are is just perfect. Good, change. Put your hands on your feet. Carefully push up. How about last? Turn around, Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. So along those lines, um, you might have heard this before. I love this quote. It says, um, yoga is kind of one of the only sports or physical activities where the object and the subject are different. So in basketball, the subject is basketball and the object, the goal is to win basketball, right? In football, the subject is football and the object, the goal is football, to win a football game. But in yoga, the subject is yoga, but the object, the goal is you. So it doesn't matter how deep you go into the postures as long as you feel good. Now, don't get me wrong, too much is too much, but too little is too little too, right? If you're not challenging yourself, if you're not feeling anything at all, like maybe go a little bit deeper. But for most of us, we tend towards the opposite side where we're pushing too hard. And this is just an arena where you can practice easing up a little bit. If outside of yoga, you're always push, 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 let yoga be an opportunity to practice slow down. Okay, remember you can roll off to the side here, skip the sit up or legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up, elbows to the floor, forehead to knees. Good, turn, come to the back of your mat and tell half tortoise, Ardha Kramasana. I'll show you the first one from the side. Sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels. If it hurts to sit on your feet, start by standing on your shins. Arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs. Stretch up as tall as you can, suck your stomach in, go down with a flat back. You're welcome to put your hands on the floor and walk yourself in. Otherwise, arms over your ears, forehead to floor, little fingers to floor, squeeze your palms together. As you inhale, reach your arms forward. As you exhale, sink your hips down. One day forehead touches the floor, hips touch the heels at the same time. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change slowly, come up, arms with your ears, stomach in. Nice, arms down, turn around, Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Every time we lie into savasana, try to make it like a good savasana. Heels close together, toes fall open, arms down, palms face the ceiling. Let your back carefully realign to the floor. Let the floor hold you up. Slowly over time, the neck, the shoulders, the hips, everything softens down a little bit more. Another sit up, legs together, arms over your head, maybe other thumb on top, keep things interesting. Tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Elbows to floor, forehead to knees. Good. Turn, come to the back of your mat and towel, second set, half tortoise. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs. Stretch up, belly in, slowly go down. Forehead to floor, little baby fingers to floor. Tilt your pinky fingers down, elbows and wrists off the floor, just the knife edges of your pinky fingers touch the floor, the rest of your arms are in the air. Reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, re-energize, reorganize, revitalize. Good, change, slowly come up, arms with your ears, nice, arms down, turn around, savasana. A friend once told me in that posture, she was like, oh, I love the, it feels like a chiropractic neck adjustment. I love that moment when like your neck cracks in that posture. And I was like, I've never had that happen. That sounds delightful. I want my neck to get a chiropractic adjustment in half tortoise. And Ever since then, I'm always like, maybe one day, but I've kind of come to the conclusion that our physiology is different, right? So her neck gets a nice, um, gentle stretch in that one in a way that mine stretches, but doesn't pop, right? And um, it's true throughout class, like even though we're doing the same postures, and even though it's obvious maybe we're doing them to different degrees, um, what you feel might be different. It's the same reason like why you come to yoga might be different from another person what you feel in a posture might be different from another person. And that's kind of what's cool about it, right? It's like we're doing the same thing 
at the same time, but we're having different experiences with it. And that's um, pretty neat, right? So don't be afraid to like share your experience with it because somebody else might learn something or think of yoga or think of a certain posture or learn something, a tip or a trick that they never thought of before. I learn new stuff about these poses all the time. So thank you guys for teaching me. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. It's so wonderful um, to learn from one another. Okay, come to the top of your mat and top for Camel Ustrasana, our deepest back bend. Show you the first one from the side. Stand on your knees, six inches between your knees and your feet. Put your hands on your lower back, thumbs outside, fingers down to the floor. Keep your eyes open, mouth closed, and at first just look up towards the ceiling. If this feels okay, slowly tilt your head back. Go slow. When you're ready, keep your hands on your back and slowly tip back halfway. Freeze in the middle. If you can see down to where the floor and the wall behind you meet, right hand down, grab your right heel. Left hand down, grab your left heel. Thumbs outside, fingers inside. Full palm grip on your heels. As you inhale, lift your chest up. As you exhale, push your hips forward. Hips over knees, chest up to the ceiling. Chin away from your throat. Look for your toes behind you. When you're ready, place your hands on your back first and then carefully push up without twisting your spine so your head comes up last. Gently turn around, Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Heels together, toes fall open, arms down, palms face the ceiling. Notice what you're feeling. Notice that it might be different from what somebody else is feeling, but do know that whatever you're feeling has certainly been felt before, right? So if you feel dizzy, nauseous, lightheaded, heavy-headed, um, that's all really normal. We're just releasing some tension from the front of the body. A lot of us are carrying tension right now, um, obviously COVID, but also like, hey, the seasons are changing. And if you're like me, you're sneezing a lot from allergies, and then people are giving you weird looks about sneezing, and then you're shrugging your shoulders trying to like shrink away from other people. So maybe you're carrying some tension on the front of your body too. This posture is excellent for getting rid of that tension. It just sometimes feels a little uncomfortable in the process. So always do second set. You might be able to open up a little bit more and you'll certainly walk with a little bit more levity after class. So do second set, here we go. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, elbows to floor, forehead to knees. Okay, turn, come to the top of your mat and towel. Hey, if you have tight knees, you can also roll up your mat or towel a little bit so there's extra padding under your knees. And second set to open your hips more, you can open your knees more, like eight to 10 inches between your knees, still keep six inches between your feet. Put your hands on your lower back, thumbs outside, fingers to the floor, squeeze your butt, push your hips forward, keep your eyes open, and at first just drop your head back. You can stay here the whole time, I really mean that. When you're ready, go back halfway, freeze in the middle, if you can breathe, Right hand down, left hand down. So you don't have to go very far to open the front of the body. You can keep your hands on your back, eventually grabbing the heels, never rushing or forcing. Hips forward, chest up, head back. As you're ready, place your hands on your back first and then carefully push up. So your head comes up last, very nice. Turn around, Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. And make this your best Savasana yet. Heels together, toes fall open, arms down. Picture your lower spine getting a little softer towards the floor. Letting each and every disc, each and every vertebrae reset. Remember you can skip the sit up or legs together. Arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Round your spine. Enjoy the stretch. Great turn. Come to the middle of your mat and towel for rabbit sasangasana. Sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Make L's with your hands. Flip the L's down. Grab your heels. Thumbs outside. Fingers inside. Full palm grip on your heels. Stretch up. Tuck your chin to your chest. Go down. Chin tuck to chest. Forehead to knees. Automatically top of head to floor. Reach back, grab your heels up to the arches of your feet, pull on your heels, stomach in, and lift your hips up. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Shoulders up, heels together. 
If your grip is sliding or your feet are coming off the floor, ease up. You're rounding your spine, but there's not too much weight in the neck and head. Hips forward, belly in, round your spine. Good, change hips down, slowly uncurl, vertebra by vertebra, disc by disc. Feels so good uncurling. Hot up last, turn around, savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back. Towards the end of class, sometimes the mind starts to wander to like what's happening after class. And instead, I just invite you to keep your mind with your body in this moment, in this breath, without concerns about the past or thoughts towards the future, just being here now. It's the mind-body connection. And it's a practice, right? It's not easy at first, but if we just slowly, continuously return our thoughts towards our breath, it's a little bit easy to keep our minds with our bodies. Second set, rabbit. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Push the air out. Push and squeeze. Good. Okay. Turn middle of your mat and tell. Second set, rabbit. Let's hop to it. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Grab your heels from the outside, thumbs outside, fingers inside. Scratch up. Tuck your chin to your chest. Go down. Round thy spine. Forehead to knees. Top of it before. Pull on your heels. Lift your hips up. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Suck your stomach in, lift your shoulders up, root down through the tops of your feet, ankles, shins, and knees. This is the last posture in the fixed firm series. Good, change hips down, slowly uncurl, chin tuck to chest, head up last. Wonderful, turn around, savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Okay, last little bit of class. Let's do it together. Here we go. Legs together, finish strong. Arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. You can do it. Great, turn, face yourself forward, head to knee pose, Johnny Shirasana. Right leg out to the top right corner of your mat, bend your left leg all the way in. Touch your heel to your costume so the sole of your left foot pushes into your inner right thigh bicep. Arms over your head sideways, palms together, interlock your fingers. Turn to your right. Tuck your chin to your chest, round your spine, and touch your forehead to your knee. Now, if you're looking at your knee right now and going, no way can I touch my head to my knee, just bend your right leg. Touch your knee and head together, front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. Interlock your 10 fingers up to the webbing underneath the ball of your foot and flex your right toes back to your face. Good. Change. Arms up, left leg out, right leg in. Stretch up, turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest, round your spine, touch forehead and knee together. Everybody flex your toes back to your face. It's a really great way to stretch through your Achilles and your calf. Practice the grip for standing head to knee tomorrow. All 10 fingers interlocked, not like you're going to eat a sandwich, but like you're going to help the friend over at fence. Suck your stomach in, bend your elbows down, right elbow down, right shoulder down, roll into the right. Change, arms up, both legs out in front of you. You can skip the sit up or carefully lie down on your back. Let your spine realign and sit up. Good, I'll show you from the side. So in um, head to knee pose, we rounded the spine and squeezed the stomach. In stretching pose, we wanna stretch the spine and stretch the stomach. Bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with your peace sign fingers, thumbs on top, and start to walk your hips back, right, left, right, left. Knees can stay bent at first, no problem. Lean forward with a flat back and touch your stomach to your thighs. As you're ready, walk your hips back even more. Eventually, legs are straight, and if you can, lock your legs. If your legs lock, lift your chest and then bend elbows down. Still trying to go down with a flat back. So stomach to thighs, chest and knees, one day toes and head touch. Very nice. Change, come up, turn around, Subhasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your head. Back and set, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, second set, head to knee pose, right leg out, left leg in, two legs make an L. So a common mistake is for people to open the legs super wide. You wanna keep your hips square, so your legs should make an L and 90 degree angle, no wider. Arms over your head, stretch up, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee, eventually your legs will be straight, eventually you can lock your legs and touch elbows to floor. Notice if you're holding weight to the right, roll into the left, left elbow down, 
Left shoulder down, left hip down, left knee down, roll into the left, two shoulders in line. Change, arms up, left leg out, right leg all the way in, stretch up, turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest, round your spine, touch your forehead and knee together, flex your toes back, suck your stomach in, bend your elbows down, right elbow down, flex your toes back, right shoulder down, flex your toes back, roll into the right, two shoulders in line. Good, change, arms up, both legs out, carefully lie down, and sit up. Second set, stretching, Paschimottanasana. Bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with your middle and index fingers, thumbs on top, scoot your butt back, right, left, right, left. Something to pay attention to, are your toes turning in like tacos? Tacos come after class. Spiral your inner thighs down, flex your pinky toes back so the soles of your feet are flat, and if you can, lock your legs. If that's easy, start to bend elbows down. So make sure you're stretching through the Achilles, the calf, maybe even the hamstring. Stick your butt out a little bit, roll the shoulders back and down, stomach to thighs, chest to knees, one day toes and head touch. Good, change, come up, turn around, Savasana. One of the hidden gems of this style of yoga, I think, is flexing the toes back to stretch the Achilles, um, especially if you do other forms of exercise, like anything running related, right? Um, can like pair Achilles and this, stretch to the Achilles tendon will help keep that part of your body safe. Like I know, you know, most sports right now are not happening and that's wonderful, but I, gosh, I really hope all the professional athletes are like flexing their toes back towards their face in their downtime because otherwise it's like a really good way to get injured. So good for you for stretching that part of your body every day, a couple times a day. So good for you. Okay. Last posture of the day, spine twist. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. Especially in like basketball and football, right? Like the big guys really need to like stretch that part of the body. Okay. Spine twist. Take a moment. Look at your legs. Identify which leg is left, which leg is right. Don't mix them up. Bend your left leg on the floor. Touch your right heel to your left knee corner. You can also keep your right leg straight out in front of you. Right arm behind you like a second spine. Left arm up. Stretch up and over. Grab your left knee with your left hand. One day hand, heel, and knee touch. Inhale, stretch up, belly in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder twist. You can keep your hand behind you or grab your hip, your waistband, one day your inner thigh. Try to keep your right foot flat on the floor. Left knee down, point your left toes. Shoulders down, chest up. Inhale, stretch up, belly in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder twist, twist, twist. Change, unwind, swap out your legs. I'll show you this side from the side. Bend your right leg on the floor. Touch your left heel to your right knee corner. You can also have your right leg straight out in front of you. Left arm close behind you, right arm up. Stretch up and over. Grab your right knee with your right hand, hand, heel, and knee all touch. Inhale, stretch up, belly in. Exhale, look over your left shoulder, twist. Feel each and every vertebrae twisting. You keep your hand behind you or do the half bind. Point your right toes, right knee down, left foot down. Inhale, chest up, stretch up, belly in. Exhale, look over your left shoulder, twist, twist, twist. Good, change, unwind, turn around, savasana. Breathing slowly in and out through the nose. You guys, we're going to finish on time, it's a miracle. Legs together, it's because of all of you, good for you. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. Turn, come to the middle of your mat and towel. Sit well, couple body, knees, feet together, hips on your heels, hands on your thighs. Um, if it hurts to sit on your feet, don't do it. Sit on your butt, crisscross applesauce. Remember to exhale through your mouth. And as you exhale through your mouth, snap your belly in. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times. When the stomach relaxes, the inhale happens on its own. It's pretty cool. Concentrate, meditate, don't forget to have fun. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times. Chest up, shoulders down. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Good for you. Honor yourself, give yourself a hug, high five, pat on the back, turn around, relax, the last nut.
close your eyes, open your arms and legs. All you have to do is breathe. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. Slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. Slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. And picture yourself in perfect, radiant health. You're welcome to leave as you're ready. If you want to stay a few more minutes, I will read you one last poem. So the, um, the poem I read you earlier was called The Invitation by Araya Mountain Dreamer, and she wrote that, and people loved it. And so she actually ended up writing a follow-up to it called The Dance. So this is her um, follow-up to The Invitation. The dance. I have sent you my invitation, the note inscribed on the palm of my hand by the fire of living. Don't jump up and shout, yes, this is what I want, let's do it. Just stand up and quietly dance with me. Show me how you follow your deepest desires, spiraling down into the ache within the ache, and I will show you how I reach inward and open outward to feel the kiss of the mystery sweet lips on my own every day. Don't tell me you want to hold the whole world in your heart. Show me how you turn away from making another wrong without abandoning yourself when you are hurt and afraid of being unloved. Tell me a story of who you are and see who I am in the stories I am living. And together we will remember that each of us always has a choice. Don't tell me how wonderful things will be someday. Show me you can risk being completely at peace, truly okay with the way things are right now, in this moment, and again in the next, and the next, and the next. I've heard enough uh, warrior stories of heroic daring. Tell me how you crumble when you hit the wall, the place you cannot go beyond by the strength of your own will. What carries you to the other side of that wall? to the fragile beauty of your own humanness. And after we have shown each other how we have set and kept the clear, healthy boundaries that help us live side by side with each other, let us risk remembering that we never stop silently loving those we once loved out loud. Take me to the places on the earth that teach you how to dance, the places where you can risk letting the world break your heart and I will take you to the places where the earth beneath my feet and the stars overhead make my heart whole again and again. Show me how you take care of business without letting business determine who you are. When the children are fed, but still the voices within and around us shout that soul's desires have too high a price, let us remind each other that it is never about the money. Show me how you offer to your people in the world the stories and the songs you want our children's children to remember. And I will show you how I struggle not to change the world, but to love it. Sit beside me in long moments of shared solitude, knowing both our absolute aloneness and our undeniable belonging. Dance with me in the silence and in the sound of small daily words, holding neither against me at the end of the day. And when the sound of all the declarations of our sincerest intentions has died away on the wind, dance with me in the infinite pause before the next great inhale of the breath that is breathing us all into being, not filling the emptiness from the outside or from within. Don't say yes, just take my hand and dance with me. So thank you all for dancing with me this morning. I love you guys. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm teaching a 4 p.m. yoga class tomorrow. I will unmute us now just to say goodbye.